So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. Because I am a strong believer. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said, that everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm going to be the one I said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me, but I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. The same was also when I went into not just in bodybuilding, they said no. When I wanted to come to America, when I wanted to go to America, they said it's impossible. It's, it, there's no money that you have to fly even over there. You have no money when you go over there to live. And what do you think? They're going to wait for you. There's plenty of big bodybuilders over there. It was all no, no, and it can't be done. It's impossible. And I remember then that the same thing happened also when I went into the show business. Can you imagine I was now a bodybuilder? I weighed 250 pounds. I was Mr. Olympia six times. I was Mr. Universe five times. I missed the world and missed international. I won 13 world bodybuilding championships all together. And now I said to the agent, the Hollywood agent, I want to get into movies. He said, <laughs> that's funny, Arnold. I asked the studio executive. I say, I want to get into movies. I want to be a leading man. He started laughing. So they all say it's impossible. I said, why is it impossible? It's because look at how big you are. You weigh 250 pounds. Hercules bodies and muscular bodies weighing 20 years ago. 20 years ago, they did Machista and they did all these Samson movies and Hercules movies and stuff like that, but not anymore. I know this is the 70s. You know the sex symbols today? It's Al Pacino. He weighs 150 pounds. It's Dustin Hoffman. He weighs 146 pounds. And guess who else is a sex symbol? Woody Allen. So imagine they're telling me now that those are the new sex symbols. So they have to forget about it. And then they told me this, and your accent, even if you reduce all your body weight and everything, you have a normal body. Your accent. I said, your accent, I mean, it will go give people a goosebumps with the German accent. It will get people the creeps. They will get scared. He says, no one in Hollywood ever has become a leading man that had an accent. Doesn't happen. People in America want to hear their actors talk like John Wayne, or like Burt Reynolds, or like Clint Eastwood. Not like someone on Hogan's Heroes or something like that. Some Nazi movie. That's the kind of stuff that they heard. They said, no, you see, it's impossible. And plus your name. Your name, who can pronounce Schwarzen Schnitzel or something like that? No one can pronounce it, so forget about it, Arnold. This is the kind of thing that I heard. Imagine, you go from studio executive to studio executive, from agent to agent, from manager to manager, and they all said exactly the same thing. Now that's very encouraging, isn't it? But you know something? I didn't give a shit. Because I believed that I can be a leading man. I believed that I could be another Clint Eastwood or another Burt Reynolds, or another Warren Beatty, or whatever those characters were, Charles Bronson, and so on. I believe that I could be those people. I said, there's enough room on that ladder that I can fit up there. And I looked back again and learned from what I learned in sports, in my case, in bodybuilding. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm going to do the same thing now for acting. And of course, I went to college to study English, I studied the said voice, accent removal, acting classes, and all of this stuff, all day long. I work. <laughs>
a short period of time, I made one movie called Hercules in New York, which of course went right into the toilet. But it didn't discourage me. I still had the same vision. And then all of a sudden, I did Streets of San Francisco. I did Stay Hungry and Pumping On and The Villain. And then all of a sudden, I was asked by Dino De Laurentiis in the Universal Studio, biggest studio, to star in Conan the Barbarian. And after I did Conan the Barbarian, the director at the press conference said to the press, the director was John Millius, he said to the press, if we wouldn't have had Arnold, we would have had to build one. So think about that. The very body that they said can never be sold because the time is wrong. A few years later, I'm doing Conan the Barbarian and it was the number one hit at the box office when it came out in the summer of 82. Think about that. And the director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, my body became an asset, not a liability. And the same thing was with Terminator. After we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I think the movie wouldn't have... Think about that. The body and the accent that they attacked was an asset. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. Because that's exactly the way it was in politics again when everyone said no, 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 and it can't be done. And then became governor of California. And this is with everything like that. This is just the reality of it. This is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So this is a very important lesson for all of you. So when someone says, no, this is a stupid idea, you in your mind, you don't have to say it, but in your mind, just say this, fuck you, you're an asshole. If I would have listened to the naysayers from bodybuilding to showbiz politics, I would not be standing here today talking to you. I would be in Austria in the Alps yodeling. That's right. I would be in Austria still left yodeling. That's what I would be doing. Exactly. So this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers. And the next thing, the third point that I'm going to make to you is, before we sit down with Jürgen and talk about the rest of the three is, work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. You cannot get around. You have to work and work and work. 